Hi there, my name is Ron Rogers and this presentation is titled, We Don't Need No Stinking Pilots, Pilotless Airliners. Hmm. Well, as you all know, there is a, a historical precedence, if you want to put it that way, for pilotless aircraft of sorts. Uh, a lot of them are used in uh, combat, like the uh, Predator and the Reaper here. Now, I was a 737 uh, captain, and I had as my co-pilot a uh, brigadier general in the Air Force. Now, and before that time, I had had uh, full bird colonels as my uh, co-pilots. And, you know, for somebody who who uh, left the Air Force as a captain to have somebody that uh, high ranking in the right seat and say, uh, yeah, would you get to walk around in the rain? It, it's kind of interesting, but I was uh, I was getting even better. Now I was up to a brigadier general as my co-pilot. But he says to me, he says, wrong. He says, you know, the Air Force needs drone pilots. And he says, uh, you could go back as a major and uh, fly one of these uh, uh, Predator or Reaper drones and, you know, operate it halfway around the world. And I said, well, that's interesting, but, you know, a 50-some-year-old major, uh, a lot of people would be looking at me going, boy, how did you screw up? But, you know, it was it was somewhat intriguing. You know, it would be kind of a, a part-time job in the reserves. And I said, hey, this sounds really interesting. I said, man, I'd love it. I'd, I'd get it my uh, my bathrobe there. I'd have my cup of coffee. I'd go out to my little computer. I'd get my little joystick there, and I'd operate a uh, aircraft halfway around the world, blowing up terrorist installations and stuff like that. And I said, hey, that'd be a blast, you know. Uh, Literally, I guess, in some respects, probably doesn't look as good on the other end of the whole thing. But anyway, I thought, well, that, that's encouraging. And he goes, uh, not quite. And I go, oh, what do you mean? He says, well, here's, here's your setup here. And it's really kind of cool. And I'm going, man, that looks cool. That looked great in my den. And he goes, no, 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 no. You got to go out to one of the installations like at Las Vegas. And I go, hmm, Las Vegas. He says, yeah, they have trailers out there at the Air Force Base. And I said, I don't know of anything good that comes out of a trailer in Las Vegas, you know. But uh, he says, well, no, 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 you go out there and, and you'd operate it out there. Well, I like where I lived on the lake and stuff like that. And I wasn't excited about going out to uh, Las Vegas, not to uh, offend any Las Vegasites out there. But I said, yeah, I'm not as excited about that. But, you know, there's been a good precedent established for actually operating aircraft remotely. And the one thing that was interesting, and I'd heard that they'd actually taken people out of Air Force pilot training classes and assigned them to drone duty and I go that's great you go through that uh, through all that and you 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 fly a remote control drone but they they had some trouble they thought that they could get kind of uh, guys who uh, played uh, video games and they would be good for this but they found out that um, they lacked certain qualities because they would just keep going with the drone going going until it was game over uh, something went so severely wrong that the drone crashed he says when we have pilots as drone pilots uh, they realize that hey the situation is deteriorating let's get the aircraft back somewhere safe before we lose it so he says a lot more valuable to have people who are actually pilots to be drone pilots well i wasn't quite interested in that because um, i kind of liked my life the way it was but you know there is a lot to be said for automation and uh you know the developments we'd had you know, like, look how well uh, Tesla's autopilot is working out, where the where the cars drive themselves. I mean, that's really cool. And I and I was actually looking forward uh, to this technology because I kind of wanted, you know, be able to go out to a bar, have a few drinks, and not worry about getting home. You know, I, I guess there's still Uber and Lyft and stuff like that. But I thought, you know, it'd be fun to go out, uh, you know, have a few drinks and not worry about it. Or, you know, as I get older and it gets more difficult to drive, you know, once I'm, you know, 90, 100, 110, you know, I probably won't be driving. So uh, if I'm even doing anything other than making dust on the countertop. But anyway, I, you know, I thought, well, what the heck? You know, it'd be nice to have uh, these driverless cars because, you know, you go out to bar, have a few drinks. Now, this this picture really gets me here. Look at this guy surrounded by all these beautiful women, and he doesn't look happy. I mean, what is the problem with this guy? Ah, it's a, it's a very disturbing uh, a photo. But, you know... I was hoping things would work well, but uh, even in San Francisco, you know, the, the city of love, put flowers in your hair, you know, are you going to San Francisco, the song back in the 60s, um, 
you know, you'll meet some general people there. They don't like uh, the self-driving cars and, you know, they've run over bicyclists and stuff like that. But, uh, you know, so, okay, well, maybe the driverless cars aren't making as good of an impression as the marketing people originally said they would um, or, you know, the people aren't accepting as well. I, I think that's one technology that kind of hasn't uh, lived up to itself. But we're not talking about that. We're talking about airplanes. Now, back early on in uh, Airbus, I flew with a, uh, a test pilot, and I'm going to talk about this in another video, but he was uh, he was one of the Airbus test pilots, and that's early on before uh, they'd had any accidents on the fly-by-wire aircraft. And he made the comment on uh, German TV during an interview that um, a, a monkey could fly the airplane because they had so many protections, it was so safe, and, and, and uh, you know, you see the monkey with the banana there being rewarded. Now, when I was in Air Force pilot training as a T-37 student, I had a flight commander that said, you know, they, they could teach us to fly. You know, we had a, a limited amount of time, but he says, you know, given enough bananas and you could teach a monkey how to fly. Well, okay. Well, maybe we someday will go to, um, you know, pilotless aircraft. And maybe the transition is to start out uh, with a monkey in the cockpit flying, you know, once we start getting everything automated. But I actually kind of like the idea of pilotless aircraft. Um, you know, I'm, I'm, I've been retired now for almost 10 years. But my thought is, hey, the airplane's going to be pilotless. I get my bathrobe on. I get my cup of coffee. I go up to my computer with my joystick, and I taxi it out, and I take it off, and I get it up to cruise, and then I, you know, put it on autopilot and, and let it just go wherever it's going. You know, it's going to Hong Kong or something. So 16 hours later, I can come back. Anything goes wrong, I've got a, a beeper, you know, and it, it alert me to, hey, we got a problem up here, you know, a thunderstorm or something like that. Of course, it could, you know, air traffic control directed around that, so I might not even be needed for that. And this has a very great advantage. Basically, the advantage is, as a pilot, you would never have to retire. Because, okay, say you're getting a little bit old and you're climbing up the stairs to get to your computer desk and all of a sudden you get chest pains and things aren't going well and you collapse and you die right there on the steps. Because there, there are some pilots I knew that I flew with when, you know, pilots flew aircraft and they still do, of course. But uh, these guys, their goal for the retirement age was to have it found dead in the bunk. There were some people who would just never retire. And some of them had good reason. You know, they were supporting three, four, five ex-wives. So they, they needed to work. But, you know, I still had my uh, first wife. Um, I introduced her at a party after we'd been married for a year as my first wife, uh, 52 years ago. She didn't think it was funny. Now she thinks it's funny. But anyway, as a financial advisor told me, that's the best financial uh, decision you'll ever make, keeping your first wife. Um, but as usual, I have digressed. So let's get back to the subject here. Okay. Well, some people will say, well, we do actually need a pilot. What if we have a problem with a passenger that a crew member needs needs to handle? Well, here we can go back to the uh, the versatile flying monkey. You know, okay, as Airbus uh, VP said, uh, VP test pilot said that, uh, you know, monkeys could fly. Hey, you know, you wouldn't want, want to mess with this guy. Now, I know some of you say I'm a dinosaur. I've got the old ideas about pilots actually need to fly airplanes and stuff like that. But I tell you what, if I'm going to be a dinosaur, I'm going to be this guy. Let me get my pointing right here. I'm going to be this guy because that's a good dinosaur. I mean, don't even try to take my sparking, parking space. I will rip a new sunroof in your car. So if you're going to be a dinosaur, be a good one. But eventually it may come to this. Probably not in my lifetime, but eventually... People will get on board, they'll look to see that gray-haired captain, and they'll see this. Actually, they might not even see this, because we don't need those funny steering wheels up there. We don't need the seats. Um, it will probably just be the uh, passenger gate agent comes down there and punches a go button, and then it's turned over to me or somebody else setting it home uh, to go from there. All right. Well, interesting. I think it's actually, uh, given the technology, I think it's feasible, and it may one day occur. I think, actually, the biggest impediment to pilotless aircraft would be uh, customer reaction. Um, you know, things that occur, advancements that occur, don't always have simple technological issues. Sometimes they have um, cultural issues. So anyway, 
Those are my thoughts on pilotless aircraft. Thanks for watching.